Good morning. Today is Wednesday, April the 15th in this 2020 year of our Lord. Today I was uh, reflecting on the idea that since the resurrection, God has given us another chance. And that chance primarily is to be a reflection of Him to the rest of this world. That's something I think each of us struggle with to be what God created us to be, the image of God. And that image, it comes to mind that the best image we could project would be the image of love that God has shown us in Jesus. A love that embraces others as they would be embraced themselves. A love that gives more than it receives. And therein lies the struggle for most of us so today, let's reflect on who we are in this resurrection Easter season, that we are created to be the image of God. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the 143rd Psalm. Lord, hear my prayer, and in your faithfulness heed my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant. For in your sight shall no one living be justified. For my enemy has sought my life. He has crushed me to the ground. He has made me live in dark places like those who are long dead. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul grasps to you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, for I flee to your refuge. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Receive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. O oh, of your goodness, destroy my enemy and bring all my foes to naught. For truly I am your servant. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, you bring the first light of dawn to those who dwell in darkness and make your love known to them. Enter not into judgment against your servants, but let your Spirit guide us into the land of justice, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The word for today is image of God. A definition. The uncredible teaching that human beings are in some way like God. A teaching made more uncredible when one gets a good look at one's neighbor and still more uncredible when one looks in the mirror or if you're into snooty Latin crazy talk, imagio Dei. If you were to take the concept that every human being is created in the image of God to the logical conclusion, then you would have to allow that God might look something like your, let's say, Uncle Stanley, comb over, lazy eye, beer belly, the whole nine yards, Perhaps that also describes Aunt Flo, which sounds just a little cynical, doesn't it? And that's part of our point. We have a tendency to look at one another, or when we're feeling really blue or bad or down, even at ourselves, and see the worst. Looking at one another, we do not see a reflection of God, but an image of the half-evolved lesser side of our nature. 
sloping foreheads, dragging knuckles, backward sense of fashion, and so on. And that's a big part of our problem when it comes to living together. Do you remember what God thought after making everything? God saw that it was good. That bits in Genesis 1, 4, and in verses 10, 12, 18, 21, and 25 also. God saw lots of stuff that God had made and saw that it was good. And would you expect anything else? It is God doing the making after all. But none of this was in the image of God. It was all made by God, according to God's design, with an image in God's eye. But this was not the image of God. Only when God makes people, both male and female, does God's image come into play. God makes us, yes, you and your neighbors next door and down the road and around the world, in that same image, God's image. And from God's point of view, we, yes, you too, and all the rest, look if not perfect, then at least pretty darn good. This is good news for all of us, and it's wonderful news for you. You bear the image of God. You are something special, no matter what you may be tempted to think. And here's the good news for your neighbor. He or she bears the image of God, too. And that's something that we should and can try to see a little more in one another. We humans bear God's image, and we can bear God's point of view as well, and see the good, the worthy, and the wonderful that is all around us. Martin Luther speaks of love in this way. From uh, a passage reflection on Titus 3, 4, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Here is a sweetness of life, not only goodness, but also kindness. A man is kind or sweet when he is friendly and well-disposed easily approachable, not harsh, but pleasant and joyful. He makes an effort to have people enjoy being about him. They are glad to hear him speak. He is companionable, affable, and easy for everyone to get along with. He is a brother to every man you can think of. This is a sweet manner. This text sets forth Christ as one who had the sweetness of golden virtue and of deity. And goodness, this most gracious treatment of us and attitude toward us in Christ. Whoever was with him preferred his company to that of the Pharisees. Paul speaks about Christ's activity. He lived among us in the sweetest of ways offending no one, tolerating everyone. With this sweetness, he did not serve himself, but sought to show love and the effects of love toward the blind by giving them sight. He was eager to serve people out of generosity and friendliness. And now God is so disposed toward us in Christ. For it is Christ who treats us sweetly, who does everything to help us who gives his gifts, who gives teachers to teach us and to help and strengthen us in bearing evils, who is present at death to receive our souls, in short, who wants to love people. Christ's ways, of course, should be our ways. Gentleness, kindness, sweetness of life, reflecting the image of God in what we say and what we do. But to do those things, we have to contend with the humanity that is a piece of each of us, our sinful self, 
the part of us that thinks more about the well-being of me than of you, the one that is more conscious of what I'm missing out on and can get if I need it and I want it at the cost of others. We live in a world now that is trained on a common enemy, and that's the enemy of COVID-19. We should be trained on other things as well, on the issues of poverty, on the issues of inequities, on the issues of things that help people not be good reflections of that image of God that we were each crafted to be. And perhaps along the way, we'll find a little bit of that kindness and gentleness and caring and love that makes us more perfect images of the God who created each of us as we tackle the common ground that we stand upon, the things that trouble our world. It's good to see the cooperation and the outreach of love that has been expressed in so many ways. It's far better to see that than what the news used to be. News of war and fightings and people at each other. Now we are at other things that are bringing us difficulties, and that's a good thing. So reflect on what that image of God looks like to you and how you see yourself as being a reflection of Christ Christ who is raised from the dead, that we might have another chance each and every day to be a truer reflection of what God has created us to be. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for crafting us in your very image, the image of your heart that is poured out in love toward that which you have made, poured out in the person of Jesus Christ, we thank you for showing us the true reflection of you in the person of Jesus. Let us turn to your word and those stories that reflect who he is to this world to know him even better and to see in our Christ the very image of ourselves. Help us to know of your goodness, O Lord, toward us that we might in turn be good toward one another. Lord, we thank you this day for the new day that is upon us. For here in our, in our home, for the rain that nourishes the earth, for your presence in the caregivers of others who have fallen ill, we thank you, O Lord, for the blessings of salvation and hope in the risen Christ. And we ask that you would guide us on the pathways that uh, we will travel this day to be a more perfect image and reflection of you to this world. Strengthen us in our faith. Help us to seek answers to those things which confound us by speaking to you in our thoughts and in our prayers. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would care for each of us as we have need especially for those whom we commend to you in our prayers and thoughts this day. Hear us, O Lord, and come to our aid. For we ask this in the name of Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, <coughs> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.